الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له هو رب العالمين واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وكريمه وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My brothers and sisters it's important that we become more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The term تقوى الله is used referring to the consciousness of Allah to bear in mind that we are fully and totally accountable for all our deeds and actions, our thoughts and statements, and everything that we utter or do in our lives. Man becomes saddened by the sin that he commits, but at the same time, he should become happy at the opportunity of seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fact that Allah forgives your sins is probably the most hopeful thing that you could ever have been given as a gift from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, remember that. Similarly, one of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us is a deed which is one of the pillars of Islam. One of the founding five pillars of Islam. This deed would bring about a lot of comfort. It would bring about a lot of coolness, contentment, happiness. It would bring about a lot of solution to our matters and problems. And on top of that, it would help us abstain from sin because the closer we get to the Almighty and the greater importance we give to this particular pillar of Islam, indeed, the more calm we become, the more relaxed we become, the more we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in absolute control. This pillar is indeed the pillar of Salah, known as the five daily prayers. Salah is made up of several types of units. The first is that which is obligatory and compulsory five times a day. The second is that which is taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that which he fulfilled as well. And the fourth is that, or the third is that which is permissible. Permissible meaning not specifically at a time that it was done by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but if a person would like to exceed, there is leeway. The Messenger, peace be upon him, has said that indeed you may get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling this salah. So there is that which is compulsory, there is that which is sunnah, meaning the path and the that which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do himself, and there is that which he has said is voluntary completely that you may engage in. For example, you have a need, you have an issue, you want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, or you just want to exceed in the number of what we would term nafila, there is absolutely no harm in that, on condition that it also conforms to the method taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we take a look at some of the verses of the Quran and the narrations of the statements of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pertaining to the prayer and its importance, we will come to realize that it has been given such great importance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically says several times in the Quran, وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةِ I'm sure we've heard that so many times. Establish the prayer. He doesn't just say fulfill the prayer. Aqimu here refers to establishing something correctly. Make sure you do it repeatedly and properly. And then Allah says, if you would like to achieve mercy, you need to establish your prayer and you need to fulfill the arms to the poor, which referring here to zakah. So Allah says, Wa aqimu salata wa atu zakata wa ati'u rasoola la'allakum turhamoon. If you would like to achieve rahmah, which is the mercy of Allah, you need to establish your salah, you need to give from the wealth that Allah has given you to the poor, and at the same time you need to follow the path of the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you do that, you will be able to achieve rahmah. 
Rahmah is here referring to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, what we will understand is when it comes to the congregational prayer of the obligatory salah, that which is far, the men are encouraged very, very strongly to fulfill it as far as possible in congregation. And one of the evidence of this is from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says again, وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَرْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Establish your prayer. Give out the arms to the poor. And find yourselves bowing with the others who are bowing as well. The rukua that you make, try not to make it individually when it is the obligatory prayer. Prostrate with those who are prostrating, bow with those who are bowing. There are so many benefits of fulfilling this together. Because it is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are part of one family. We are different perhaps in our likes and dislikes when it comes to worldly matters. But each one of us should be earning closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling the rights of one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Brothers and sisters, the importance given to this prayer is such that in the last moments of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world, his concern was salah. Imagine he was unwell. Imagine he was in what was known as sakaratul maut, the pangs of death. And he speaks about it himself. And yet, when he sat up and he warned his ummah, the message was for you and for myself, for all of us. He said, as salah as salah He continued reminding the people regarding salah, regarding the five daily prayers. It's definitely something very big in the eyes of Allah. People don't understand the value may Allah make us from among those who are regular with salah. Salatul Fajr, sometimes we are awake most of the night. A short amount of time is left, half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour left for Salatul Fajr. And we decide to go to bed knowing that we're going to miss the prayer. How can we do that? Stay awake for one more hour for the sake of Allah. Make your dhikr or remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No harm. But if you love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will shake you to think that he is the one on his deathbed saying, as salah, as salah, warning the ummah. I am warning you about this prayer, this prayer. In the Arabic language, when you want to warn someone seriously about something, you repeat the one word twice. So this is what he did. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us fulfill the statement that we utter with our tongues, that we love Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by honoring the words that he has uttered, by fulfilling what he has asked us to fulfill for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, what we do need to know is that he, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has told us that the best of your deeds the best deeds that you can fulfill is salah, your five daily prayers. It's the best deed that you can fulfill. اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّ خَيْرَ أَعْمَالِكُمْ الصَّلَاةِ وَلَا يُحَافِظُ عَلَى الْوُضُوءِ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنٍ You need to know that the best of your deeds is salah. And it is only a true believer who will fulfill the ablution or the wudu correctly and try and remain in that condition. Do you know that if you try to remain in the condition of wudu throughout the day, automatically you will be protected from committing sin? Have you thought of that? If a person is in wudu throughout the day and they are concerned, your wudu is broken, you make another one. You will be, become more conscious of what you do during the day. How you talk, how you walk, it will help you. So the, this hadith, this narration states, and it appears in Sunan ibn Majah, it states that it is only a true believer who will protect his wudu, who will make sure he fulfills it correctly, and who will make sure that he tries to keep himself in the condition of wudu. I want to draw your attention, my brothers and sisters, to the fact that when we make wudu, we waste a lot of water sometimes. Be careful of that. When we make wudu, we rush sometimes. What is the point of opening the tap so much and rushing to make wudu, neither did you fulfill it correctly, nor did you save any water. So let us try, while you are making wudu, there is 
another act of worship known as saving water. You can engage in it. Two acts of worship in one. And there is an act of worship known as perfecting your wudu. That this hadith says it is only a true believer who will achieve this. Similarly, did you know that the minor sins that a person commits through the day are forgiven when he fulfills or she fulfills the next salah, the next farah? If you are looking forward to the next salah, to the next prayer, then what will happen? The minor sins that you may have committed through between the two salahs, they are automatically forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is something extremely important for us to note. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud in the Quran, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَ إِن نَهَانِ وَزُلَفًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبِنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَى لِلذَّاكِرِينَ Establish your prayer on the two sides of the day and at a portion of the night this is reminding us of the times of the prayer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed good deeds will wipe out your bad deeds this is a reminder for those who wish to be reminded in the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's words he says <laughs> when you've done a bad deed quickly follow it up with a good deed because the good deeds will wipe out the bad deeds how beautiful is that when you have done a bad deed, it is depressing. So quickly follow it up with good deeds and good deeds make you feel good. If any one of us gets up very early, we have a shower, we apply a little bit of perfume and we'd like to eat Salatul Fajr, we go to the masjid and we are early there and we fulfill Salatul Fajr and we come back home. How good do we feel? We feel so good because it's a gift of Allah. Try it, my brothers, and you will see what happens. My sisters, you will be fulfilling that salah perhaps in your home if you try it by getting up early and ensuring you're doing it for the sake of Allah. Look how good you feel through the day. A believer should be such that the day does not go well if they have delayed or missed their salatul fajr. And the day will go smoothly if they have fulfilled that salatul fajr. So one of the ways of seeking forgiveness of these sins is indeed by fulfilling our salah correctly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that easy for us. Similarly, one of the best deeds that you could engage in when it comes to wudu, ablution, is known as isba'ul wudu'i ala al To fulfill that wudu correctly, even though you may be feeling lazy to fulfill it. Sometimes you have a cold day, mashallah, the winter at this time, in this part of the world, subhanallah, becomes very cold and the water is extremely cold and the heaters are on and the blankets and the duvets are keeping us warm and we have to get up for the sake of Allah and open the tap and make wudu perhaps the water may be cold and we are doing it solely for the sake of Allah the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi says that is in fact a very very great sacrifice that is loved by Allah why? Because you are only doing it for Allah. Say it to yourself if you want. Say, oh Allah, I am only getting up because you have instructed me to get up. I have no other purpose to get up right now. Subhanallah. See how good you feel. Talk to Allah. Imagine if you were to die on that particular day and you had already told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, that oh Allah, the only reason I'm getting up and doing this is because you have instructed me. I love my sleep. But I heard as salat fayrum min al nawm Salah is better than sleep. If that is coming from you, I will get up. My sleep comes after you. You cannot come later on. Allah comes first. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Then there is another narration which makes mention of how a person who walks to the masjid in the dark hours of the night, whether it is salat al isha or salat al fajr, they go to the masjid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them a complete noon on the day of judgment. When people notice this noon, obviously they will now know the reason why you have this noon is because you used to make sure that you were at the masjid in the nights, in the darkness. And the darkness here depicts the fact that we are not doing it to show off. You don't go to the masjid so that people think you were there every time in the first saf 
and you were there and so on and yes I did it because if I didn't go my friends would be asking about me that's not the reason the reason is to please Allah so when the darkness is mentioned it means no one really notices that you're gone only Allah knows may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us regular with our salah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us similarly in salat al fajr did you know that there are special angels designated to come in and to listen to the recitation this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of in the Quran. Inna Quran al-fajri kana mashhuda. Indeed, the recitation of the early part of the morning, that prayer of Salat al-Fajr is witnessed. According to the Mufassirin, it is witnessed by the angels as well. Subhanallah. Special calmness. The effect of the soothing recitation at the time of Fajr is absolutely different from any other Salah. You attend Salat al-Maghrib or Salat al-Isha, the Imam, same Imam will be reading. Attend Fajr with him and it sounds unique. It sounds absolutely peaceful. Something totally different. It's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, we need to know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man sallal Whoever reads the two cool salahs, they will be granted Jannah. What are these two cool salahs? First is Salat al-Fajr and second is Salat al-Asr. The reason why these two are made mention of specifically, it does not mean that there are only two salah in the day. But it's giving you the importance of forsaking your sleep. People are sleeping when it comes to Fajr. And sometimes people are sleeping when it comes to Salat al-Asr. So to get up for that and to make sure you go to the masjid, you deserve a unique gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So much ease Allah has granted us that the hadith makes mention of the fact that if you are unable, if you are unable to read salah standing, no harm, you can read sitting. If you are unable to read sitting, no harm, you can read lying down. Today, subhanallah, we have no excuse, no excuse whatsoever. If you cannot stand, you sit. If you cannot sit, you will lie down and read. You may be in an aircraft, for example. That does not mean you leave your salah out. You fulfill it because Allah says, if you cannot stand, you will sit. It does not mean solely because of sickness. It is connected to your ability or inability. Sometimes you are unable to stand and fulfill your salah for reasons besides medical reasons. If you are totally unable, it falls into this hadith. Read Salah standing, you're supposed to. If you cannot, if you are unable, for whatever reason, read it sitting. If you are unable, read it lying down. Find out from the scholars how to fulfill your Salah in these different ways. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. Similarly, when it comes to your house, your home, don't let your home be void of fulfilling salah. Make sure that your sunnah and nafila, some form of prayer is being fulfilled in the home. Have a special place in the house perhaps where you might want to lay out some mats and that is the place where prayer is fulfilled by the women folk and even by the men folk who perhaps will fulfill that which is beyond their father uh, at home. So it's a lie, your children will watch you, they will see you and subhanallah, there is an ambience that would be improved because of your salah that is fulfilled there but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't let your home be a dead home whereby there is no salah being fulfilled in that home. There is no Quran being recited in that particular home. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed blessed us and bestowed upon us the gift of salah. This salah is actually a gift. The sign of a believer is when he considers salah a gift of Allah. For as long as you consider it a burden, you need to improve still. Don't consider it a burden. If you consider salah a burden, you need to work on it. It's not a burden, it's a gift. It's your ticket to enter Jannah. You are ready to work for eight hours a day in order to earn a few dirhams, a few dollars, in order to be able to live for the month and pay your rental, Allah says, hang on, you want to earn your whole paradise. Just fulfill your salah correctly. So these are payments that are made that should be made with a smile because they will benefit us more than anyone else. Similarly, 
a duty upon us all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us all by making mention of something very interesting. He says, وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْطَبِنْ عَلَيْهَا Instruct your family members to fulfill your salah as well. Instruct your family members. Encourage your family members. You and I know that if you are regular with salah in your home, and if the sisters are regular with salah in the home, for example, when I say salah for the men in the home, we are talking of that which is beyond the far. If for some reason you missed going to the masjid, that doesn't mean you must miss the salah in totality. You fulfill it no matter where you are. But if your children are watching you, because you fulfill it in the home, for example, they will automatically mimic and copy. They copy. A little child of one year old will copy you in such a beautiful way. But that's only if you are fulfilling the salah. I'm sure we have seen so many clips of little children fulfilling salah because they watched someone. Maybe they cannot yet speak, but they are going to sujood and they want to wear the, the covering of the head if they are little girls because they see the mother doing that. So this shows us that we need to lead by example and this is something extremely important. Encourage or instruct your children, your family members to fulfill their salah and be patient upon it. Be patient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us through this message of the Quran and through the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his statements. Indeed, this prayer is something extremely important. When the adhan was to be called, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to ask Bilal ibn Rabah, who had a beautiful voice, Arihna biha ya Bilal, O oh Bilal, call out this adhan so that we can get some raha we can get some calmness, we can actually achieve some goodness out of this call to salah. We want the coolness of this call to come in our direction. Brothers and sisters, won't you agree with me that when you hear a beautiful call to prayer, itself is so powerful that you want to go there, you want to go to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand the importance of this beautiful prayer. In fact, success, all success, is spoken about in the opening verses of Surah Al-Mu'min, where, in fact, Al-Mu'minun, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad al-mu'minun. Indeed, the believers are successful. What is the quality that is made mention of first? The first quality of a believer. Al-ladheena hum fi salatihim Establishing their prayer with complete concentration and humility. You are humble and you try your best to concentrate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every success and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors and grant us the goodness, make us able to fulfill this salah in the best possible way.